This is Tailgate Talk, presented by Tarpon Blue. Let's take a ride. In this series, we're going to show you everything Texas and its surrounding southern states has to offer, right here from our very own tailgate. We'll take you from life on the farm and the ranch to the big city lights. This is Tailgate Talk. Come along for the ride. Hi, I'm Katie Abermite, and welcome to this week's episode of Tailgate Talk. We're in Zorn, Texas, with Richard Cook, owner, bootmaker, and designer of Richard Cook Custom Boots. He's going to tell us a little bit about his business and about his trade of boot making. Hello, Richard. Hello, how are you? Great, wonderful to see you. Thank you. Um, will you tell us a little bit about how you got into, into boot making? Sure. Um, years ago, I used to make sculptures for a living. Okay. And uh, the economy got difficult, so I had to do something else, and I went into law enforcement. Uh -huh. So in the, in the mid-1980s, I was working for the Burnett County Sheriff's Department, and I met a bootmaker by the name of Jack Reed, and uh, he and I became very close friends, and uh, I used to watch him make boots occasionally, and I decided that uh, I couldn't push a patrol car around all my life. And when I retired, I wanted to be able to do something. So I talked it over with Jack, and he agreed to teach me how to make boots. Oh, wow. And uh, later on in, uh, in 1999, he, because of health problems, he had to retire and get out of the business. Mm -hmm. So I was his last formal student, and uh, I agreed to uh, buy him out and start making boots, and that's what I did. Uh, that's what I've done. I, have been making boots since the summer of 1999. Oh, wow. So how many pairs of boots do you think you've made in that time? Well, since then, I'd say maybe four or 500 pairs. Oh, wow, that's a lot. How long does it take you to make a pair of boots from start to finish? Well, it really depends on the design the person wants. If, uh, if, uh, if the customer wants a lot of uh, artwork, inlay work, or stitch patterns or so, it, it would take more hours. A, right. a plain pair of boots takes about five days, just a plain plain Jane pair of boots, and that's up to 12 inch tops. But uh, like I say, inlay work, initials, a brand, overlay work, wh whatever details, extras a customer wants is going to take a little longer. Uh, uh, the longest it has ever taken me to make a pair of boots was uh, about three weeks. It oh, was wow. for a lady who wanted uh, 25 roses, five five roses, yellow roses on the front and five on the back. So it it, it, it took me, well that's actually 20 pair, uh, right. 20 roses, pardon me, 20 roses. And so that took about three weeks. Oh wow, I can imagine. What are you working on here? Uh, this is a, a pair of, of short top boots for uh, a customer who wants them made out of French calf. And okay. uh, I'm getting ready to cut the tops. Uh, the patterns are right here. And it's, uh, uh, she wants just to, uh, she's uh, from out of state, and she's from a big city, and she just wants an elegant pair of black boots that she can wear to work in, in, in her line of work. And so it's, it's a very simple pair of boots I'll make. Uh, I should have probably have them ready by the end of next week. Oh, wow. That's really great. You work with all different kinds of leathers? Yes. Uh, by far, the most of the orders I get are for calfskin. Uh, there's also uh, people like bullhide, uh, water buffalo. Now, water buffalo is considered a exotic leather, but it's not in the high-priced exotic leathers like alligator or uh, crocodile or elephant or ostrich. Okay. Um, also, uh, 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 rough out leather, pigskin, is, in my opinion, is the best rough, rough out, out leather. Okay. Um, and then the exotics, of course, like I say, uh, alligator, crocodile, uh, elephant, ostrich. Uh, there are some leathers I won't use, uh, like I, I don't like to use caiman or snakeskin. These are uh, leathers that are 
in my opinion, they wear out faster. There, there's not a good processing technique that allows them to last a long time. Okay. Um, if someone wanted to come in and order a pair of custom boots, what does that process kind of look like? All right. Uh, if they know what they want, it saved me a lot of time. Right. Uh, most cow working cowboys or ranchers or people that just like to get custom boots, they know exactly what they want. It doesn't take a long time. If, it, if it's a new customer, I measure the feet. It takes about 20, 25 minutes. Now, if a person doesn't know what he or she wants, then I'll have to help them along. I'll ask them, well, what, let's start with what color would you like? Right. Uh, what, then the next, it, it goes into what kind of toe, what kind of heel. Then I'll ask the big question, what kind of leather do you like? Do you like smooth, do you like rough, exotic? That list, take care of that. And then after that, we'll come up, I'll, I'll tell them, give them a rough price what it, what it is. I'll ask for a $500 deposit. They go on my work list, I measure their feet, and then when the boots are ready, I'll contact them, and uh, they'll if they live close by, they'll come and get them, or if they're far away, I'll have to ship them off to them. I've got a, I've had customers in England. You have a lot of boots, France. Well, you'll have to tell Mrs. Cook that I was having my mister, but uh, I'll so see her another day. There are times when I'm yeah. only on the phone. Ship ship the boots off. Yeah. That's great. Um, what makes a custom pair of boots different from a pair of boots that you can just go buy at a retail store? Well, it's the fit. The, the fit is the foundation of this trade. Uh, like the famous Charlie Dunn once said, if they don't fit, they're not worth a darn. Uh huh. And very true. The boots have to fit. So a custom boot maker gets his reputation by the fit first, and then by the quality of his craftsmanship. And I know you were showing us, and we'll look at them in just a second, but you showed us a pair of boots that you first made about 24 years ago, yeah. and they look brand new still to me, to the untrained eye. Well, they look amazing. Thank you. Uh, the reason is because they're mine. I made them for me. <laughs> and I made them out of uh, kangaroo. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh, Jack Reed helped me make my first pair of boots. And they mean a lot to me, so I want to just keep them going. Even though my feet have changed, uh, they're kind of tight now, and I've, I've changed them once already. But but now, I, I, because it's a narrow box toe, I don't think that I can get them to, to really fit the way they used to because right. my feet have spread out a little bit, I think. But. So let's, let's talk about that just a second. If somebody did order a custom pair of boots and their foot changed, Sometimes is it easy to modify the boot if it's custom made and you made it before to fit to fit their foot now, depending on how much their foot has changed? Well, it depends. Uh, it depends on how much they've changed. Right. Uh, uh, and people can, people's feet, the, the size of people's feet will change even by just gaining weight or losing weight. Right. So uh, that's something I, I try to really stress on people. Uh, for example, when I measure a person's feet, the, the, the weight of the socks is important. Because if, when they come over here to try them on, if they're wearing socks that were like, like might be too thick, they may not be able to get them on. That's right. a very critical measurement, the weight of the socks. So uh, I always tell everybody, make sure when you come get your boots, you're wearing the same weight of socks that you were when I measured your feet. Uh, now, in, in, as the years go on, if people's feet change, uh, everybody's feet change right. th through the years. And, then, and sometimes I can fix that on the boots, sometimes I can't. Right, I, I, I would assume it would depend on the style. Like you said, if, this, if it's a very pointed toe, you probably right. can't really change that that much. Right, right. Versus other stuff. Right, I, I have people uh, ask me about this. Uh, they, they'll call and say, my, my foot no longer it, it, uh, get, gets in there very easily. I, they're way too tight, especially in the toes. Can you fix that? Well, if the toe is uh, being pinched at the end, chances are, no, I can't. Right. Because there won't be enough leather to, to, to re-last. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you show us a couple pairs that you have here in the shop that you've you made? You bet. All right. 
Okay, so these are the infamous kangaroo boots that you made 24 years ago. Yes. You want to tell us a little bit about them, or do you want to uh, we can well, show them for the camera? It's, They're beautiful. Uh, they, these are, there used to be a company in Australia called Bilby, and Bilby Kangaroo was very popular when I first started making boots. Uh, and their, their kangaroo le leather, as you can see, is really nice. It's soft, very light, very strong, inch for inch. This has got to be the strongest leather on the market, but uh, as other kangaroo leathers. Right. But they, for some reason, they went under. And, and But this was my first pair of boots that Jack Reed helped me with. And uh, they mean a lot to me, so I just, even though I... I can't. I don't fit into them like I used to. They are. <laughs> yeah. They're, they mean a lot to me, so I, so I just keep, keep them. them keep them going. Um, and then this pair is for a customer. This this is a rather simple pair, but it, it's very, just in its simplicity, in my opinion, it's it's very elegant. Yes. Uh, the leather is bullhide. It's uh, Spanish leather, and the tops are French calf, and uh, it's it's. Uh, uh, got very nice luster, very nice uh, uh, feeling to it, and uh, the customer wanted his initials uh, on the outer pull strap, and the initials are made out of kang kangaroo leather. So, uh, and they're, and they're, they're constructed very well. He's going to enjoy them. Now, this one, you did, you mentioned earlier to me that you made this for a man who's six foot seven. So I imagine he has a hard time finding boots in a store. So that's another good right. reason. You know, everybody has unique feet, but um, that's a good reason to come to a custom boot maker is to get a unique sizing or right. or style for your foot. That's correct. Uh, this particular customer was a basketball player in college, and uh, he was telling me uh, he had special needs for the tennis <laughs> shoes because uh, he, he wanted them real tight right? Uh, because, so there's, there wouldn't be any play in his feet when right. he was on the court. So it may have, it, it could have affected the way he wears shoes, period. I don't know. Right. But uh, I made them to his measurements and specifications, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, those are beautiful. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about these. I think these might be one of my favorite pairs that I've seen. Yes. Well, I, I made these for my watch. Yes. And she wanted butterflies. Uh, and she wanted narrow box toes, and we're patriotic people. We're red, white, and blue. Yes. So I combined all that, and this is what I came they, up with. They are beautiful. I don't know if you can see the detail in the camera, but the all of the over, I'm assuming this is like a, what you would call an overlay, right. or the butterfly, the leather's laid over. It's got overlay and inlay. Yeah. And all, is, all the overlay and inlay leather is made of kangaroo. Oh, it's beautiful. And, these are and the stitching collars. is wonderful. Yeah, the, these uh, these on the tops are called collars. Mm -hmm. They're also made out of kangaroo. They're beautiful boots. And that pair there that you have you, is another custom pair right. for yourself, correct? Right. Now, you'll notice there's no heels and soles. The reason is because I'm relasting this pair of boots to get a lower heel. Originally, they had two two inch heels, and now they need to have standard heels, which are an inch and a half to inch and Five eighths, and this particular design, you can see there's a lot of stitch work on the vamp. This, the, the front part of the foot is called a vamp. I, I found this design from a pair of boots Hank Williams was uh -huh. wearing in a photograph. He's sitting in a chair next to the daughter of uh, Roy Aka, and this is the the vamp pattern and the top pattern is what was on his boots. I don't. The boots were the picture was in black and white, so I don't really know. Mm -hmm. What, what, what color the, color the stitching were. was, but here again, I like red, white, and blue. So, so that's what you picked. That's what I chose. Uh, something we should mention to everybody is that you don't do boot repairs or resoling. I don't. Right. That's just for yourself. Right. 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 If uh, if somebody has an issue with a pair of boots I've made, I'll do everything I can to correct it. Right. Uh, but just standard uh, resoling or, or or new heels or something like that, I I don't do. Now, if somebody needs a heel cap or something that's minor that I could do quickly, sure, I'll do it. Right. But but for a, a major repair or a major change, I don't have the time. Right. That makes sense. I'm sure you're very busy. You have beautiful right. work. One man shop, you're looking at it. Yes. Uh, let me ask you another question. Where can people find you if they want to get in contact to order custom boots? 
What uh, do you have a website or anything that they can look at? I do have a website. It's uh, richardcookcustomboots.com. Okay. And my address is 9150 FM 1101 Seguin. Now it's not actually in the city limits of Seguin. It's about all oh, about 11 miles north of Seguin. Right. Okay. Well, perfect. I'm so glad that you were here with us today Thank on you. Tailgate Talk. Thank you for showing us your beautiful work. I got to sell some more houses so I can buy some boots <laughs> now. And we'll see y'all next time on Tailgate Talk. Thanks for tuning in today, and thank you to our guests for sharing their story. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on, on Tailgate, Tailgate Talk. Ooh, we'll tell you things you might not know. Just stay a while, we'll make you feel at home. At the Tailgate